안녕하세요. Good morning. As introduced, my name is He Sung Kim. I am the director of the pre-submission consultation division. The MF, uh, MFDS became the ICH member in 2016, and starting from 2018, we have been providing uh, this training for the the industry, the pharmaceutical developers, and the uh, people in this community. And although today is a sandwich holiday, but we have a lot of people registered for this training, so we are very happy to have you today. So today for me, I will talk about the ICH and the process of the ICH guideline development and the working group activities and what MFDS does. So go into the ICH overview for the ICH. What is a unique harmonization initiative involving regulatory authorities, the pharmaceutical industry, and other stakeholders. It is established in 1990, and it was re, uh, reorganized as a non-profit association under Swiss law on October 23rd, uh, 3rd, 2015. Its purpose is to centralize global efforts toward the pharmaceutical regulatory harmonization. So uh, when it comes to the harmonization, the regulatory bodies and also the industry participants are working together based on the science, so the development of the scientific guideline is really important. And if you look at the uh, organization of ICH, we do have the assembly and also the management committee and uh, METRA uh, management committee and ICH man uh, the ICH secretary. And the ICH guideline adoption and also uh, the Acceptance of the new members are conducted by the uh, assembly. And also, the as for the management um, committee, the management committee consists of eight permanent members, regulatory authorities, and industry associations from the US, Europe, Switzerland, and Canada, elected members, and the standing observers like a WHO, uh, IFMA and the, uh, it oversees, approves all the administrative and financial activities. And when it comes to the MADRA Management Committee, it is responsible for overseeing the operation of the MADRA and expert working uh, groups develop guidelines and create educational materials, including QAs, Q &As to support guideline implementation. And ICH Secretary handles administrative tasks, such as organizing meetings and managing documents. And each members coordinator serves as the point of contact between the ICH secretariat and the member organization. And um, in the early days, the, the pharma in Europe, EPA, and JPM are the founding members, and the Canada CS. And then um, there was an expansion in 2015, uh, which also involves uh, the Singapore and the Brazil as the regular members. And IGBA, Bio of US became the uh, regular members. For the observers, as you can see from the table, and also the WHO is the standing observer and the APEC and other six uh, regional representative organizations and EDQM, USP are also the observers. And these are the uh, eligibility for the members before 2015. Um, ICH, the C was the council, but it was a conference. So. It started from the con as a conference, and as it became an organization in 2015 with expansion, it also expanded the scope of the members and the membership uh, eligibility criteria, as you can see from here, for the regulators. Uh, they must have previously attended regular assemblies at least three times and appointed experts to the working group at least twice with experience in attending WG meetings. And they must also be implementing Tier 1 guidelines, GMP, GCP, and safety. And for the Tier 1, in IECH, 
they uh, categorize the guidelines for it, tier one, two, three. Tier one is the ones that the, com the, the members should be implementing it before they became the uh, member. And tier two, within five uh, years, tier three, These are also should be implemented after they join the uh, ICH. In 2016, with the Brazil and Visa, we uh, submitted application and became the regulatory uh, member. And starting from 2007, as a, one of the members of the IAPEG, we participated in the, Congre uh, Cong uh, the assembly. And in 2016, we also participated in the 17 working groups and the tier one guidelines, the three of them were implemented. So we occupy, we fulfilled the eligibility criteria. And as for the industry, they must have been attending the assembly at least two times and should be implementing the ICAG guidelines. And for observers, they can uh, attend assemblies, but they cannot have the right to appoint experts to the working groups or vote. However, the standing observers like the WHO and FMA, they retain the right to appoint experts to the working, uh, the WGs. And uh, for the uh, ICH Management Committee oversees ICH as administrative and financial activities. As I said before, ICH Management Committee is composed of the standing MC members, which are eight, and elected MC members, and also standing observers. Unlike the standing members, the elected members serve a three-year term and are elected every three years with the possibility of re-election. In June 2018, there was the first election for the elected members, and our agency was elected as a member of the ICH Management uh, Committee. The ICH uh, Management Committee Representatives are selected through a vote at the first assembly held every three years, and uh, they can um, set up the agent. And we were elected, re-elected as the member of the management committee again, so the MFDS will continue to play a leading role in setting the direction and standards for international pharmaceutical regulation. The assembly makes a decision based on the consensus, and if the consensus cannot be reached, and a vote will be held according to the Articles of Association with the voting right uh, restricted to, to the regulatory members. The MFDS first attended in ICH in 2007 at the Brussels meeting in Belgium, and at the time we participated not as a regulatory authority, but in the capacity of the deputy representative of APIC. And a Portland uh, meeting in 2008, the MFDS began attending the regulatory authorities meeting as the official representative of Korea. And since then, we uh, have been regulatory partici regularly participating in the ICH meetings held uh, twice a year. Uh, with a continuous participation in the meetings, we built international trust and from 2011, the agency began contributing to the development of the pharmaceutical guidelines by joining expert working groups. In building on its efforts and achievement in the regulatory harmonization, MFDS became the Six regulatory authority to join ICH as a full member during the November 2016 ICH assembly following the US, European Commission, Japan, Switzerland, and Canada. And in June uh, 2018, MFDS was elected to the management committee. And as of 2024, it continues to actively participate in the long term strategy planning for the selection of the topics for the guidelines and the planning and executing the budget. And the the 2024 uh, first half uh, ICH assembly was held in Fukuoka, and we discussed about the uh, Madra meeting also took place. And the new topics and strategy decisions uh, were conducted, which includes the nitrosamine impurities M7 addendum. Uh, it has been drawing a lot of interest from the industry, and it was endorsed as a new topic at the assembly. 
and next is the ICH uh, process for the guideline development. Step one. There is a pre-step one before the step one. During this uh, process, um, the topic is selected, and then the award ICH expert working or formal procedure is followed. There are five steps for this formal procedure. For each step, the process moves forward based on the consensus approved uh, uh, approval by relevant bodies such as assembly, management committee, and others. So step one. The expert working group provides the draft. So the draft is approved by the EWG experts uh, during the first step. And in the step 2A, the assembly uh, approved the draft. And to B, the regulatory members approved the draft. In step 3, the approved uh, draft uh, has been um, shared for the public comments and then the, the uh, expert working group experts approve the final guideline. As a regulatory member, MFDS also uh, receive and collect the uh, feedback from the industry. So that is the draft uh, from the step to B and the public consultation is conducted at, at step three. And step four involves the final approval of the guideline. And that is actually the completion of the guideline development process. And step five is the stage where each member implements the guideline uh, domestically. The new guideline topic proposals are considered once a year. So by mid-December every year, members and observers can submit new topics. And the member or the observer proposing the topic participates in a meeting to present their proposed topic. And then there will be a Q&A session. After two to three meetings, ICH management committee members submit evaluation scores for each new topic. And based on these scores, the MC and the assembly decides whether to adopt the guideline. The ICH management uh, committee reviews all the submitted topic proposals, assign priorities. And during the June meeting, the assembly decides whether to adopt or withdraw the topics recommended by the management committee. Usually it takes about six months from the submission of the new topic to adoption. And on the ICH website, you can see the implementation steps and the dates for different guidelines for different countries. And these are the topics, the major ICH guideline topics. And as you know, we have cut, uh, categories Q, which is the quality and safety S and efficacy E and also the more than two areas are uh, cross uh, crisscrossed in the multidisciplinary guidelines and I will talk about the ICH uh, expert working group activity For the ICH working group, as of June 2024, uh, there are more than 33 working groups involving 760, 765 uh, experts. And MFDS is participating in 15 working groups. And the MFDS implementation activities will be shared. As a regulatory member, uh, we have the responsibility to implement the guidelines. So we also contribute to uh, the direction, setting the direction of the uh, guidelines globally. So out of 116 ICH guidelines, 105 guidelines are implemented, which is 91%. The partial implementation is 8, which is 7%. Non-implementation is 2. By area, as you can see here, 2023-2024-Q13 was introduced. Uh, the continuous manufacturing or the process for the DSNDP. And um, M7R2, the impurities and general toxicity evaluation guidelines and the Q&A. 
uh, there was also revised in September 2023, and I'm 10. The validation of the the bio uh, samples and E9 R1, the statistical analysis for the clinical trials, and for this year's training, I think S12 M2 R1. I'm sorry, S12, M7, M10 will be uh, handled. E9, R1, which is the addendum, statistical principles for the clinical trials. Uh, there will be separate, uh, there was a separate training. Uh, there will be a, a separate training in at the end of this year. For the quality, uh, 90% of the uh, guidelines are being complemented. And for the safety guidelines, S1BR1, except, except for that, all of the safety guidelines are in implementation. For efficacy guidelines, 90% of the implementation rate is achieved. And for the multidisciplinary guidelines, 94% of them are being implemented. So as of 2024, the guidelines that are not yet implemented are nine and they will be implemented by 2026. The ICH assembly uh, is, is held for twice a year. The working groups can be held during the assembly uh, period. And this year, the second half will be held in Canada. So through international regulatory uh, harmonization activities uh, such as ICH, the government can secure an international standing comparable to that of major pharmaceutical countries and foster cooperation. And for the industry, uh, this will create a favorable position to lead the global pharmaceutical market and serve as an opportunity to boost export industries. International cooperation activities will contribute to sharing global level regulatory information and enhancing the nation's credibility. By raising domestic safety management standards, uh, we can have the opportunity uh, to receive high quality pharmaceuticals. So with the various activities, MFDS will provide and deliver uh, safe pharmaceuticals, quality pharmaceuticals to the uh, public through various international cooperation activities and the cooperation of industry and an academic experts will be a great source. Thank you very much, uh, Hee-sung Kim.